we are going to shift gears and we are going to bring on Dr. Sandeep, a.k.a. Sunny Mystery here. And he's coming all the way from Hawaii. He got in yesterday and is, is up bright and early to help us today. So we are super, super thankful. Um, if you've not had the chance to meet Sunny, he's so much fun to talk to. He's a great presenter, so much energy. You guys are going to love him. Um, a couple of little housekeeping things before we start. One, I'd like to um, thank Dr. Kalen and Carol Silverberg for sponsoring um, Sunny, but also personally thank you since you're here. And it was such a nice surprise. Kalen was surprised this morning to see that you had sponsored his presentation. So we want to also turn around and, and thank you for um, for supporting the foundation, for supporting our other speakers, and most of all, for supporting people that are going through infertility and treatment and so forth. So um, thank you for all of all of that. And also, folks, he's also a member of our advisory board, so he's always there for questions that we have or, or things um, that we need to talk about. So just a, a quick intro on Sunny. He's a board-certified urologist who's practiced in the Austin area since 2007. He trained at Baylor College of Medicine and has been doing advanced infertility work since he came to town. He performs all aspects of the male infertility evaluation, including advanced treatment of spinal cord injury patients. And if I recall, that's a fairly new technology or treatment, which you're pretty excited about when it was rolling out. Um, as well as sperm extraction. He uh, has a strong interest in, in um, advanced testing to determine causes for infertility in men. He's also taken a holistic approach, including nutrition, supplements, and lifestyle management <clears throat> as part of the overall um, effort to improve men's fertility. He's actively involved in research in regards to improving sperm quality at the University of Texas. He's an associate clinical professor at Texas A&M University and also the host of a weekly radio program on KLBJ News Radio called Armor Men's Health Hour. And he also started Men's Fertility Center of Austin in 2010 and practices throughout Austin. And as if he's not busy enough, he's taking part of his weekend and his vacation to share um, this time with us. So I feel very fortunate <clears throat> to have a few minutes of his time and I think it's so important because um, when we were going through infertility, my husband would get so mad because he's just like, we, he'd call somewhere and say, oh, is your wife a patient? And he's like, no, I'm a patient too. And so I think Sonny's doing such great work in, in um, including the male piece of the puzzle in all of this. So thank you so much, and thank you for being here. Oh, we're quiet. Let's see if I can... Here we go. 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 Can you hear me now? How about now? Um, Are we better now? Am I coming? Am I, well, I'll just be quiet and then it should be okay. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for having me. Is that echo pretty bad? It is. Do you, well, I should have spoke earlier. Just, you know, if you just mute your speakers, it should just, it. you won't be able to hear me, but I can chime in if I have something I've got to say. I'll pop in the window. Um, now he. Now you're muted. You are muted. So it's definitely not an echo. Do I sound okay now? Yes, perfect. Excellent. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, be part of this program and uh, to talk about men's fertility. Uh, the speakers you've had on have been spectacular. And if anything, it brings to mind two really important kind of aspects. Uh, one is how much it feels like this is a woman's only disease sometimes when it comes to infertility. Uh, and um, how important it is for us to really emphasize the uh, role that men play uh, in the fertility journey and to make men's health and men's fertility a more important uh, part of the process. Uh, and so I really appreciate uh, being able to share some of my thoughts and uh, the changing paradigms. Another thing that comes really uh, to me is how many speakers have discussed 
uh, inflammation, lifestyle choices, and things just beyond hormone tests and surgery that affect fertility. And the same goes for men. And so that's a little bit about what I will share today. So I'm going to share my screen here today. So I hope you guys can see that okay. Um, the title of my talk today is Understanding Male Infertility and What's the Role of Advanced Testing and Lifestyle. Uh, we have um, a question first of why focus on male fertility to begin with. And in up to 50% of infertile couples, a male contributing factor can be found. So about a third of couples, it's uh, really a primarily male factor. And then in another 15%, there's a, a confounding factor for the men. There's a lot of stigmas that remain that cause men to delay their own evaluation. This idea of manliness, this idea of being um, virile, uh, really keeps a lot of men from, uh, from seeking care. Moreover, uh, when you know a man is having sex, sometimes they don't know or they don't feel anything's going wrong. So they may not feel like there's a reason to uh, look for a cause of any kind of problem. And a lot of times their wives are the ones that are really pushing um, having children. And so in some ways, the man may not feel their full responsibility. But men really have quite a bit of control when it comes to their fertility. And beyond that, um, men with fertility problems actually uh, are sick. They have a higher mortality rate from confounding diseases. Uh, and things that you can do to help sperm count also helps them live longer. So in a way, it's a disservice really uh, to men to not include them in the fertility evaluation. And when uh, I see a man with low sperm counts not being sent for more advanced testing or more advanced evaluation, I feel like an opportunity to help them get healthier has been missed. Some common causes of male infertility, uh, there's those that you can be born with like congenital causes, genetic causes, and anatomic abnormalities that you can be born with. You can even be born with part of your reproductive system missing if you're a man. There are more commonly acquired causes. Uh, cancer and chemotherapy treatment uh, can be very devastating towards uh, a man's um, fertility. Genital trauma or surgery. Infections can play a role and sexual problems. Uh, erectile dysfunction and um, a, one of the more advanced treatments that we have is men with uh, spinal cord injury that have difficulty both ejaculating uh, and getting an erection. And there's a number of lifestyle things, things that uh, really come to mind and as being quite obvious, but uh, maybe things that we don't spend enough time trying to adjust, alcohol and smoking and obesity and nutrition. Inflammation, uh, previous speakers have spoken about the role that inflammation plays on reducing uh, a woman's ability to get pregnant. But the same is true of a man's ability to get pregnant. Uh, inflammation represents a normal biologic process uh, that uh, is the body's response to help heal damaged tissue or defeat foreign organisms. But inappropriate inflammation can be implicated in many diseases. In fact, the inflammatory basis of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and autoimmune disorders is something that uh, those types of internal medicine doctors find to be uh, very well understood and, um, and highly accepted by the community. Inflammatory substances made by white blood cells and other inflammatory processes can damage cell membranes, blood vessels, and DNA, and can cause damage to sperm. And if you damage the sperm, you will lead to poor motility, morphology, which is how they look, and impair the ability of the sperm to fertilize the egg and for the new embryo to divide. So even in cases of IVF where we feel like after fertilization, the embryos are not developing uh, to that five-day blastus stage or, or developing in a robust manner, we really implicate uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the health of the sperm as one of the potential causes for that. Um, reduction in weight, controlling medical diseases, and nutritional interventions can all have a major impact, and I'll discuss that here uh, shortly. There are evolving attitudes when it comes to sperm uh, counts and the importance of men's health. And one of the big changes is that quality may be more important than quantity. So we 
talk about the sperm count evaluation, sperm counts, as if the number was the only thing that was important. Having sperm is important, of course, but uh, quality uh, is important as well. And we are getting more and more ways to test and to determine how good the sperm quality is and how important the health of the DNA within the sperm is. Uh, in addition, men, just like women who are having children later in life, men are having children later in life. And because of that, uh, they, you have to factor in uh, a wider range of medical problems that could be impacting their fertility. Psychological and physical stress and infertility is also a really interesting um, uh, area of study for me. Uh, stress from anxiety, medical disease, and lack of sleep can cause a stress response. A, a previous speaker spoke about the, the, the fight or flight response that stress causes. You know, when your body is getting ready to escape danger, uh, it, it really uh, um, makes a lot of shortcuts and sacrifices to get you out of danger. And if you're in a stressful situation for prolonged periods of time, your reproductive health is going to take a hit. Stress from trying to have a baby can also cause the same problems. I have a number of patients who have erectile dysfunction or ejaculatory dysfunction, just situationally related to uh, having a baby. And um, uh, sex as a chore becomes kind of a common theme that we see amongst men who are uh, trying to have, have a child. And having to deal with that can also impact their sperm counts. Diet, exercise, and self-care truly have a biologic basis when it comes to improving fertility. And we say these words, but I think that a lot of doctors have trouble motivating patients to uh, make those changes. And that's why having other partners in our health, whether it be acupuncture or mind-body experts or nutritionists, really helps us round out what efforts we're going to make to improve somebody's fertility. Chronic medical conditions uh, can have significant impacts on fertility, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, and all of these contribute to a general inflammatory state that can affect fertility. I mention these things because oftentimes men will come to see us with uh, poor fertility factors, and I will look back and see that they've had some type of chronic medical condition for some time that hasn't been aggressively addressed whether it be high cholesterol or high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, they won't, be, they won't be started on medication. They'll be encouraged just to kind of lose weight or get healthier. But um, the importance or the connection between those conditions or those preconditions and their infertility uh, oftentimes won't be emphasized. There is also the issue that a lot of these men are young. So when you get a 35-year-old man with marginal prediabetes, a little bit overweight, a little bit of high uh, cholesterol, you may, um, you, you may tend to not be as aggressive in terms of the treatment recommendations you have. But when they come and see a fertility specialist, we're going to be a lot more aggressive about tightening their metabolic system up to try to maximize their fertility. The standard fertility evaluation for a man, the first, and, uh, first thing that we'll do oftentimes is a semen analysis. There are some genetic, hormonal, and metabolic factors uh, that we look for. We really delve into their lifestyle and then look at any physical abnormalities they may have, such as a varicocele, a very common cause of male infertility, or any prior surgery that could affect their fertility. The basic semen analysis has been around for many years. It's a sample looked at under a microscope. We can look and see uh, if there are normal sperm, they can be counted, and we can do some basic um, tests to determine how they look and how they're moving. And that's been the mainstay of the male fertility evaluation for decades. But just because you have sperm, it doesn't mean that they're all created equal. And what research has allowed us to do is to go beyond with what we, what we can see uh, to select even better the champions that are going to do a better job of helping to bring about a successful pregnancy. One of the most common tools that we use now is called the advanced semen analysis. This looks at just beyond what does the sperm look like? But what does the DNA of the sperm look like? How is it behaving? How robust is it? Uh, and then we can also look for another really uh, key factor, uh, which is called reactive oxygen species. This tells us, has the inflammation that we've been concerned about in the body affected the health of the sperm? And will it impact negatively uh, a couple's ability to get pregnant either naturally or through IVF? 
DNA fragmentation uh, is one of the common tests that are uh, performed in these advanced semen tests. It refers to damage done to the genetic material carried by the sperm that may lead to fragility during the process of fertilization and division. Uh, we think about uh, what it takes to, to get a baby. Um, there's just 23 chromosomes in the egg and 23 chromosomes in the sperm. They come together and have to divide trillions upon trillions of times to, uh, to make a living human being. And if there is significant damage to the DNA of either the egg or the sperm, that constant division may not um, may break down uh, DNA that's already been damaged. And so being able to identify that beforehand can help you choose sperm that are more likely to result in a healthy embryo and a healthy baby. Uh, there is a decrease in the rates of natural pregnancy and IUI with higher DNA fragmentation. And so we look for ways to reduce DNA fragmentation uh, in men that, in, that, that involves not only hormonal, sometimes surgical intervention, but also um, lifestyle modification as well. Reactive oxygen species, uh, these are chemicals that are a normal byproduct of normal cellular processes. And when they get too high in number, uh, they can damage the DNA as well as the cell membranes. And we can now test for damage done by reactive oxygen species and then create interventions to help reduce that. A lot of that happens to do with supplements. We can use uh, vitamin C and vitamin E to help reduce reactive oxygen species. And that uh, plays a role in our recommendations to patients when we are giving them advice on how to improve their fertility. As I mentioned before, increased DNA fragmentation and reactive oxygen species does decrease the rates of natural conception and IUI, uh, but also impacts IV. IVF rates. So it would be nice. Uh, it's, it's one thing to be able to test and see how damaged the DNA is. It's something else entirely if you could find a way to weed out the, um, the ones that were damaged and selectively pick those that were better quality. And we have that technology increasingly now. Uh, the Zymot sperm separation system is an example of a way that you can, in real time, take live sperm and separate them on the basis of how uh, strong and how uh, undamaged the DNA is. And uh, this can lead to better rates of both IUI as well as IVF uh, uh, success rates. Uh, but you have to have enough sperm. So all of these, even, this is not just a one-stop shop. If you don't have enough sperm to separate, uh, then the separation process has little value. And all of the other interventions that we take to improve sperm counts and quality uh, still play a really important role. So the common things that we do to improve a man's fertility, there is a role for surgery. Uh, we do uh, sometimes extract sperm. These are for patients who have uh, an anatomic uh, lack of a certain organ or, or plumbing pipe, and for men who have had a vasectomy. We also do sperm extraction in patients who are cystic fibrosis patients often because they do have that plumbing abnormality and spinal cord injury patients uh, who are unable to ejaculate. The most common surgery we perform, however, is called a varicocele repair. The varicocele is a enlarged set of veins that come from the testicle that um, when they're enlarged, more commonly on the left, they can increase the temperature of the testicle, make them less healthy, reduce the testosterone level. And the surgery is uh, relatively minor. It's covered by most insurances. It sometimes results in pain, the actual condition, uh, but uh, oftentimes not. And about 85% of patients will have an improvement in their sperm parameters uh, once the repair is performed. And in some studies, a pregnancy rate of up to 65% after the uh, repair is done. And even in couples that are going to undergo IVF, there is uh, some benefit of fixing the varicoceles. And oftentimes we will have patients who have a failed IVF and then have high DNA fragmentation rates. And by fixing the varicocele, we can help them achieve a successful pregnancy. In our practice, we're big on diet. Uh, we try to encourage patients to avoid fast carbohydrates and processed foods. Uh, stick a lot of fruits and vegetables, fish, vegetable oil, and vitamin C and E. 
Uh, in fact, when you're a patient of ours, you'll get close consultation with a nutritionist uh, because of how important uh, both weight loss uh, and the appropriate fertility support of diet can be on healthy sperm production. A lot of our patients will undergo hormone treatment. Uh, what we're trying to do there is modify the signals from the brain to the testicle, telling the testicle to make more sperm. This can include um, uh, medications that encourage the production of testosterone, reduction of estrogen levels, fixing thyroid and prolactin levels. We cannot give patients who want to have children testosterone. If you give them testosterone, it will shut down the testicles and drop the sperm count. And so we don't want to do that. So we have to use medications such as clomiphene or HCG that will encourage the testicles to both make more sperm and testosterone without shutting it down. A big push to manage medical conditions, as I mentioned earlier, uh, oftentimes we will give medications to manage prediabetes. We will actually treat um, uh, prehypertension and elevated cholesterol levels. A number of our patients with very low sperm counts and, and multiple years of unsuccessful pregnancy will be recommended for weight loss surgery and then a reduction in inflammation with auto, uh, for autoimmune conditions. Sleep apnea, which can affect men who are overweight or men with certain anatomic conditions of their upper respiratory system, uh, plays a big role in reduction of testosterone as well as worsening chronic medical conditions. So a sleep apnea evaluation and treatment uh, also uh, can accompany many of our uh, medical management uh, processes. I think that uh, all fertility specialists really believe in the importance of supplements. I think that um, there's strong scientific evidence for both improving sperm concentration as well as motility and how they're looking. Um, and um, uh, most of the commercially available fertility supplements will have high amounts of selenium, zinc, coenzyme Q, and carnitine. Uh, and all of the patients that we have uh, going through a fertility journey, we will start, start them on fertility supplements. And uh, proactive lifestyle intervention. So uh, we can help people stop smoking. We can refer them to people to uh, quit drinking as much. And then stress management and sleep hygiene, I think are very underutilized uh, aspects of proactive lifestyle interventions, but can be so important. Uh, making sure people are sleeping actively enough or enough and are getting enough rest really does help reduce the stress response and improve sperm counts. Some of the problem that you have there is that it has to be a sustained intervention because it takes 90 days for sperm to be created and to come out uh, and to be usable. And if you have a, just a short time intervention, you may not have the long-term impact on sperm quality that you'd like to see. So in summary, um, male fertility issues are likely to become more common as potential fathers get older and environmental factors worsen. We have at our disposal better diagnostic tools to help us uncover infertility and to develop treatments. And inflammation plays a major role in sperm health and is a common pathway for many of these negative fertility factors. Uh, I'm a big advocate of the whole body approach when it comes to men's fertility. Uh, I'd like to think of men as more than just the donor. They play an active role in the health of the pregnancy, the success of fertility evaluations. And uh, I think if they're included more in the process, uh, the couple themselves will feel more supported and uh, overall have better, uh, better outcomes. So uh, thank you all for supporting uh, this summit. And uh, I really appreciate uh, the ability to become a, a part of it today. I have to say, I love that last, um, that last picture there. Carol was, as we were um, listening to you, Carol was saying that she uh, wanted to have a, I have to go look it up. And she might kill me for saying this, but that she wanted that she to wanted have a I think we're going to have a problem with the 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 uh, the voice there. So um, if uh, people do have questions, I think that uh, uh, I would uh, I would love to answer them. Maybe is this any better? Yes. 
I took you out of Zoom. I think that's what was the problem. You're in two places at once, so we were hearing you in echo. Um, but no, Carol Carol was saying she wants to uh, do a, a, a Lake Austin sperm to egg race one of these days. It's kind of a fun keep Austin weird thing. <laughs> Oh, are you able to hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. I put you back in the waiting room. And there you go. Now you're in the waiting room again. Um, yeah, so, so Carol wants to do a, a sperm to egg race in Lake Austin one of these days. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that you have a, a whole approach. I feel like so many times it's about um, here's the car, you know, here's the issue. And then let's just go medicate. Let's go medicate. Let's go medicate, you know, instead of get to the root causes like nutrition and sleep and health. So I think that's super, super important for people to pay attention to. Um, what is one of the questions is just how do you from from a, a female patient? How do you talk to your husband who's absolutely against treatment or, or even being tested? I think that's a great question. Um, one of the things that, uh, that most patients get motivated by is the cost. How inexpensive it is to uh, evaluate a man. In less than $150, you can get a semen analysis, a full set of labs, and some real clear understanding of the role that the man's fertility plays in it. There's two parts there. One is the man's own reticence to believe that he could be part of the problem. And then the fear that he is part of the problem. I think that's a really important part of it. Uh, if the man feels like uh, he is, um, uh, you know, failing uh, to kind of play the role that he was supposed to, I think that sometimes uh, helping uh, the man understand that they're both in that together and that the, the evaluation for the men's fertility is so less invasive than the female uh, uh, evaluation can be. And those have been the interventions that I've seen that have been the most successful. Great advice. Cause I, I know, you know, it's, it's not easy on either side, but I think there's just more of a society, society has a stigma for the men, I guess at this point, just because it's not talked about as much. Um, another thing I didn't before I ask questions: How can folks um, get in touch with you or find you? I want to honor you and make sure people are locating you if they are in the the Central Texas area. Surely, um, my um, phone number is five one two two three eight zero seven six two, and uh, Armor A R M O R men's health m-e-n-s health h-e-a-l-t-h dot -E com will take us to our site we have uh, a uh, podcast uh, that uh, replays our radio show it's called the armor men's health hour and it's available wherever you get a podcast and we discuss men's fertility issues uh, almost on a weekly basis and we do just from the foundation see somewhat of a change there's a lot of, of men that are sort of driving the applications in and the men are are very involved in the interview process. So hopefully it's it's changing and not becoming as uncomfortable for men to, to talk about. Um, Interestingly on that end is uh, the, the previous speaker on fertility coverage. O oftentimes when we talk about fertility coverage, we're talking about IVF. Uh, and although there may be a significant uh, women's factor uh, as mentioned before, half the time there's a men's uh, male factor. And there's some, uh, as, uh, some times in which the male factor is absolute. These are gonna be cases where um, there is an, an obstruction or some type of reason that no sperm can come out of that man. And those kinds of conditions are often not covered even when there is fertility coverage uh, mm -hmm. for fertility. And uh, it can lead to incredible expenses and a lot of delay in treatment. And I can see increasingly, especially patients with cystic fibrosis or spinal cord injury, applying for uh, grants and uh, having special male-centered needs. Well, that's good information to know. And if you are you know, in the area or if you are looking for grants, that's 
an important piece to include in your your story or your submission, I would say, because I think a lot of people, even probably people that administer grants may not know that. So, <clears throat> well, awesome, Sunny. I don't want to take any more time from your vacation. Is there any like parting words or last minute things that something that you want to leave our listeners with today before we, we let you go back to the beach? Well, uh, thank you so much for uh, including me uh, in the summit. There is such an, such a, it, it is, it is a couple's problem and to, uh, to, to allow men to leave themselves out of the discussion and uh, the process, I think uh, is a disservice to, to both members of the couple. This is not unique in infertility. This happens in breast cancer. This happens in children's health. This happens in a number of different areas where uh, if we don't expect a lot out of our husbands, then maybe we can't be surprised when we don't get a lot out of them. So. <laughs> From the very beginning, uh, a message that it's a couple's struggle, it's a couple's uh, condition, and that both members of the couple need to play an active role both in the evaluation and management of the condition, I think will go a long way in changing the paradigm uh, for this condition when it comes to men. Awesome. I think that's great advice. Well, thank you once again. We really appreciate you and your time and hope you have a great rest of your vacation. And also- Thank you. Once again, thank you for being such a generous donor and sponsor to the foundation and the event. We appreciate you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day.